to a team where there's not that much news. Um, first, first things first, uh, Anthony and I were talking about this the other day, Islander fans. And yes, we're trying to cover both teams equally as much, but you guys are good at keeping news out and you only played one game this week. What the hell, NHL? <laughs> there's two New York teams. All right. So well, we want some more Islander viewers in here, especially in the comments section. There's no Islander comments in the section. Yeah, so. Shannon, where are you? <laughs> Shannon, we, we need we need our Islander viewers in here to be in the uh in the comments section to help us out because that that'll really that'll really you know get the Islander discussion going too. All right. So the Islanders had one game this week. One since the last time we did a show. And they lost in shootout to the, the national predators. You got the power play. You know, it was almost the same story that the Rangers had last night, Anthony. Two power play goals. In your case, yep. Bovillier and Wallstrom. And then, you know, third period, you lose the lead. And then you lose in, in overtime or shootout. Take it away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the Islanders, uh, the, the first period, I, I would say Nashville was, was a little bit, uh, a little bit on top of them. Um, you know, Sorokin made 11 of those 20 of those 21 saves in the first. Um, but then, you know, the Islanders from there, they kind of they kind of really took the game away. Um, and if it weren't for, you know, a mishap by Chara in the third period that led to a you know kind of a lucky Predators deflection goal that tied the game, uh, the Islanders probably get two points in that game. Um, but what seems to be the story since really after the second game of the season, um, you know, Sorokin kind of, you know, held a minute, especially in the overtime period. He made an absolutely ridiculous save in overtime. That was ridiculous. The yeah. closing seconds. I, that was when I texted you guys in the group and I asked you if he made that save and that was unbelievable. I was, um, it's, <laughs> You know, I guess it's I shouldn't be I shouldn't be shocked anymore because like the way he goes into the splits and how agile he is, it's you know it's becoming more of a reoccurring theme. Um, but they, they should have won that game. I mean, they really dominated the third period. Um, you know, again, Chara kind of you know handled misplay to play pretty badly. Um, and you know, but that's hockey. Some, sometimes one play can can lead to and results how a game ends. But um, Fortunately, you know, Forsberg put on a fantastic move in the shootout. He's one of, you know, in the, and nothing you could really do about that. You got to tip your hat to, to a creative player when they make a move like that to score. Um, but the Islanders couldn't get the job done in the shootout. But um, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. The, the schedule has been weird. You know, they, they, they shut out Vegas and then they didn't play for six days. They play the Predators and now they're off for another five. And it's like, you, you know, especially for a goalie, I think you can ask any goalie, like, not play, you know, when you have those breaks, you, it takes away from your rhythm and, like, how you're feeling. Um, you know, Sorokin was coming off two shutouts, and then he has, doesn't play for six six games. I mean, this goes for the whole roster, but I think this type of break affects the goalies most because goalies like to get into a rhythm when they play. They like to feel the puck. Um, and right now, they're not playing enough, and I, I think that can – negatively affect the team personally because as much as they're probably happy about getting to go home during these breaks and see their family spend time with their kids um you know that, that stuff that means a lot to players but at the same time on the hockey side of things i'm sure they don't like it because it, it affects your rhythm that you're into especially so early in the season when you're only what five six seven games into the season and you're already getting breaks like this it's harder it's not like they've played you know 55 games already and they had a break for, you know, 10 days or so. So this early in the season, it, it, it's a little more magnified when you have these breaks. And um, again, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wacky schedule. Um, and as I said before, you know, I, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, 13 game road trip. You know, they feel they figure if you leave these guys on the road for that whole duration, 13 games, you're talking a little over a month without seeing your family, you know, without without seeing without seeing your kids and stuff so i guess they feel um they felt that you know at least let them have some time off so in between they could fly home and actually be at home and then go back out on the road but yeah uh, i i think uh i think it's i think it's a hard thing and i think i think it affects them negatively again for that whole rhythm aspect you're not you're you know you're playing one game then you're off again so um, but thankfully, after this after this game against Montreal, it goes back into a more um, rhythm schedule from here on out. Every other day, every two days, and then obviously 
the road trip ends and they're at home. So um, yeah, tough little thing they got to kind of battle through right now. But um, what's not lost in it is that they're 3-0-2 um, since those first two games. Um, so that's good. Um, but I think they would like to play more often to get to keep those good feelings going. Well, just before I give it over to Philk, I, I have to say, just everybody remember when you're 43 or 44 years old, your life is basically over, right? So, <laughs> Philk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, thank God I have a few years before I hit that. But um, I don't. <laughs> 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 I, I'm why, already there. That's why I said that. <laughs> but um, yeah, honestly, it, their their start to this season beckons me two questions. One that I think I can answer right off the top of my head, and the other which I, I'm going to defer to Anthony a little bit for because I, I think he's probably seeing the same things that I am in this regard. But the the first question is the the net's got to be Sorokin's now, right? Because, I mean, he's played too damn good to give it back to Varlamov, if you ask me. Which I, we're going to get into more in a second. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I can't even I can't even think of how you go back to him at this point. And the other one is, I think it's time to, to stop giving Char the minutes. And I think it's time to start going to the kids. I just think he's just done. I, 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 don't, I don't see how you can continue to give this guy minutes and – hope that you're going to get to a Stanley cup final with him playing any type of significant minutes at this point. If he's your sixth and you're sheltering him. Okay, fine. But you're, he's really playing kind of like top four minutes right now, Anthony, right? I mean, yeah. she, in the last game against Nashville, uh, Trotz kind of lowered his minutes, but typically on a whole. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's playing a decent amount. Um, so it needs, it needs to change for sure. Yeah, um, I just want to let you guys know I passed Char about two hours ago when I got lunch. He was on the side of the road. There were a bunch of guys in hard hats. It was a cone. <laughs> so, granted, he's a. Are you sure that wasn't Jake Truba? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Truba can at least move a little bit. Well, well was that's it that's was it a really tall cone or was it, was it a, a really shorter cone? cone? Because if it was the shorter one, it was Truba. <laughs> it was a really, really, really big cone. Before you, just... before, you, before you go to answer Philk's first question about, you know, it's got to be Sorokin going forward. The only thing I'll say is when Varlamov came off IR, um, you know, there's some speculation is, is Sorokin going to start against Nashville? Because if he didn't and Varlamov played, but next time for Sorokin could have started, which would have been tomorrow, that would have been like, you know, 11, that would have been like 12 days in between starts and you can't do that. And it's the same situation for, Tomorrow night, if, if Varlamov starts tomorrow, when they play again against Winnipeg on Saturday, that would be a whole week since Sorokin started. And again, you can't you can't leave a guy, especially a goalie, seven days in between games, especially when he's when he's hot. Um, you know, Varlamov hasn't played yet this season, so it doesn't it doesn't matter at this yeah. point how long you go until he starts his first game. So exactly. I would say. I would say Sorokin has to start tomorrow. And then from there, being that the schedule is going to get back to normal, then you can give Varlamov his first start on, on Saturday. But it, for, as for tomorrow, it's got to be Sorokin. You can't go that long in between starts. Well, unfortunately, you know. Anthony answered this question for me, which was going to be, when should Trotz reinsert Varlamov? But, but you know, you know, it's it, it's it's okay. You, 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 you just <laughs> you're shortening the segment for us. No, that bit. that works. I, I do have to go back to this on on this thing. If you actually took the two schedules, I think, and swapped them for the Rangers and the Islanders, it would have worked out a little bit better for both teams. Older teams, like you said, they want to be home. They want to be playing games. They don't want to be practicing. Younger teams need that practice time to develop. If they're on the road, then there is a little bit more chance for com a camaraderie and stuff like that's that. That's a great point. And, and that's, that's one thing that what, that's what we do here. At Big Apple hockey. We make great points. It's just, <laughs> yes. it, 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 if you would have taken that and swapped that around, it's, it's not a problem. Now, by the way, the Islanders still have 41 home games. Where did they have their best record last year? Home. At home. So that's one of the best home teams in the NHL. Like I said it last week, big right. advantage. And uh, although there are reported delays right now in UBS's construction, there um, I saw a story. I, I can't confirm it at the moment, 
about them asking for permission to play some games in Bridgeport if needed. It's a routine thing. This happens all the time. Hell, Madison Square Garden was getting completely redone when the Rangers were playing. So everybody just relax. And also, I do need to show you this picture, Anthony, uh, since it'll it'll make you happy. Just take a yep. look at UBS Arena. I got to say, even as a Long Islander and a hockey fan, I, I can't wait to see this arena. Yeah, and the Islanders awesome. actually have an actual arena instead of – I mean, it would just be nice. To I, just, I, I like the fact that we're able to keep the Coliseum look, but everything just looks yeah. really, really good there. And and, and, it, and you got to remember, the same the same guy that did Climate Pledge, uh, Tim Lywicky, he also yeah. did UBS. So yeah. that arena yeah. is going to come out top notch. Yeah, I can't wait. Which, I can't again, wait. I, I have to repeat to everybody, the Nashville Arena, Bridgestone Arena, that place was gorgeous. It's one of the best looking arenas I've seen in the NHL um, taking the garden out of the mix because of course I'm going to be biased for the garden. All right. But so what do you think about the Islanders uh, in their one game that they played this week? <laughs> so, it's still, it's still kind of just upsetting me. It's like, what are we going to talk about? You, have you thought about the podcasters NHL? Have you thought about the podcasters? Throw Give us something the- here. <laughs> Throw it all down in the comments below. <laughs> If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.